Hey, KIC here and welcome to Griffin Knight Epic. This is a brand new game released today on Steam after a successful Kickstarter phase. It's always nice to see one that makes it from Kickstarter to the real world. That doesn't always happen. I've been playing a review copy of this game for the last week or so, so you will also see that I have posted a rather concise review today. It's about a three minute review, it tells you really the stuff you need to know about the game and doesn't really go too much into the specifics of everything else, which is a little unfortunate on the one hand, but you know, you can only say so much before you start going really long and you kind of lose everyone. But I thought, since I did do that nice handy dandy review, that it also do a little gameplay footage because, well, like I said, I've been playing this game for about a week and I kind of have an idea how it works more or less. And if you haven't seen anything about it, or you've only watched my review, you might be missing some of the finer points about how the game works. You can see right away here that, well, there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. This is a classic shmup, so you got all sorts of enemies flying at you, you got them on the ground, you got them throwing stuff at you, you got them trying to just run into you. But it does have a couple of other nifty little tricks going on that you don't see in every game. Most games you're going to be moving in one, general direction. Now you might do something where obviously yes I am going up and down as I'm going well to the right but if you were also watching you have noticed that I'm doing things like that. You can turn around. It's actually kind of critical in the game. You will have instances where you need to turn around because you needed to hit a switch or otherwise open up an area that maybe you wouldn't normally have access to. So this is also a standard shmup in the sense that you have a variety of weapons and you have the good old fashioned charge attack. You hold down your attack button just like so and the next thing you know, you wait until you're all bright and shiny and you can fire off the nice good sized bolt that will do better damage than the standard little shot you're using. Now I am playing on essentially what is a brand new save file but give me a couple minutes here and I'm going to switch to a different save file that has a little more going on but still hasn't opened up everything because, you know, I think since this isn't going to be a standard Let's Play series and this is more of just kind of sharing some gameplay footage, I don't want to give everything away. That that might be a little rude, you know? I mean, if you like the game, you really should go buy it. And if you don't, well, you know, maybe it's not your kind of game, but I grew up on these kinds of games and uh, I don't know, these hit pretty close to home for me. I, I rather enjoy this sort of thing. I mean, grab a game pad, even though I'm really a mouse and keyboard gamer, grab a gamepad and then just kind of kick back and, uh, you know, have some fun with it. This is the kind of game you could play in Steam Big Picture mode and fire up on your laptop or your Steam PC or however you have something set up with your computer. And you can just kind of kick back on the couch and really just enjoy shooting a bunch of things, oh, in various face, body, etc. regions. And really, it's just, it's a pretty fun game that's a throwback to that old style. And of course, it has mini bosses, because what would a shmup be without mini bosses, right? So here we're rolling into the first one, and you're going to see there is, well, magic lamp. Halt, noble master. Gotta like a lamp that speaks to you, right? It's a djinn trapped in the lamp, and he'll grant a wish to anyone who releases him, which, oh, that sounds like a great idea. What could possibly go wrong? Gotta pick your idea. Oh, I know, I want my princess to know she wouldn't like that. Well, I haven't even told you about the story yet, so I'm kind of glossing over this stuff right here because, well, I haven't really told you about the story, but basically, you play as a knight who rides on a griffin. He's a hero of the realm, and he wants his griffin, who is known as Akila, to talk. That's his wish. Well, your wish is in order, but first you have to release me. Oh, is that so? Great, let's go ahead and release him because, you know, what can go wrong? Anyway, you play a Sir Oliver here, and now I have released a Freet, and this is probably not going to be a good thing, right? Because, I mean, it's a big fiery demon guy, and that generally seems like a bad idea. Now, you have all these kind of bad things going on in the kingdom after... Basically, after you save the kingdom... Oh, that was bad. I got hit there. Basically, trying to knock all your friends around so you can figure out what's going on. There's some sort of, oh, I don't know, we can say kind of badness going on where after defeating a dragon and taking all of its loot, all sorts of dead, well, not dead, but uh, spirits are kind of 
causing problems in the world here, and I am really playing poorly. My apologies for that. This is not the kind of game that's easy to talk about while you're playing and trying not to die. Or at least it isn't for me. Maybe, maybe it is for you and you're just a better player than me. But I haven't even talked about how difficult the game is. And you can see right now... Ah, dang it. That was, that was all me right there. I didn't need to do that. That was me screwing that one up pretty badly. But it is a difficult game. Now, if I had a potion here, I could heal myself and continue this fight. But chances are I'm going to die. Just because, you know, it's not an easy game. And I'm really trying to watch all these little things pop in here. And there we go. Ifrit got me, and there you go. That happens a lot in the game. But let me go ahead and switch save files so you can see a little bit more of the things you can do in the game and the sorts of things that you get from, well, playing for a little while. This is one of my save files where I've actually beaten the first two areas in the game. I haven't even really shown you that. So let's go ahead and look at this sort of stuff now. I'm not going to go through the tutorial because it's a tutorial. What do you want? But you do have a variety of options here. You have a marketplace where you can buy potions, which you have a variety of different potions. And if I kick back here, maybe it'll uh, let me do it. But you can get different potions, different squires. So you saw there was a little dragon guy following me around. That's, a, that's called the squire. That one shoots fireballs. Also have one here that will basically deflect shots fired at me. It's kind of good stuff. You can get a vampire one, which, you know, has a chance of healing every time you kill someone, and a dwarf one that increases your money, and so on and so forth. You have a variety of different things to choose from. Now, your potions are going to be helpful. I mentioned just a moment ago that you can use those in the middle of a fight. They'll heal you up. They're definitely good things to keep in mind. If I bring up my inventory, you can see I have a couple of weapons because I've beaten a couple of mini-bosses. So I have this handy-dandy bow here that shoots three arrows at once, and I have this big old sword that happens to shoot, well... If I can swing around to it. A big half moon and it'll also block projectiles. Then of course I have my squires to choose from. Some different potions and these runes which are considered secret items that you find on the map by going into areas that are not easily noticeable. So one of the other things you can do is you can go into the wizard shop and with these weapons I have and runes you can, if you have enough gold and I clearly don't, upgrade these things. Okay well I could upgrade my dash rune so why don't we go ahead and do that. That's now max level. That means I can dash in any direction. That is really kind of critical to staying alive. Now, as you can see, I've opened up some more areas on the map. So these were the first two friends of the group of friends that Oliver was with that I have defeated. And you can go and basically you have to defeat all of them because you need their weapons if you're going to basically face down your specter. That's who you're fighting against in this game. You'll see all of that in the first, oh, about two minutes of the game. So again, you are you haven't missed much. I, I just skipped the, the tutorial for you because no one likes to watch a tutorial. But just for kicks, let's go ahead and hop onto this level here. You've, you've seen my review. You've seen this level. It's the kind of wintry, Nordic, Viking sort of level. And you have these lovely Viking dudes here who are jumping into the fray and attacking my guys who happen to be running with me because you sometimes have kind of, uh, I don't know, a crew with you. Not all the time. And that was, oh, that was terrible there. I, I should have paid more attention. I just didn't. But in this case, these guys, you do want to kind of help them out. I mean, it's not as important right now, but, you know, you don't want them to get hurt. You can see their health up there. They have a little bar. I haven't even mentioned the other bar that's up there for my little guy. You see, it just went up from a zero to a one. Right now, the bar is empty because it just looks orange. Here, let's go ahead and use a potion because... I am playing incredibly poorly here and I don't want to stop and, you know, reload all of that stuff. But if I can find myself another little orange gem here, you're going to see that it'll fill up my squire meter just a touch. Not a lot. And that green gem will actually give me a little bit of health. So you can get different gems from enemies. That's random what drops that have all the different effects of the potion. So sometimes you'll get an invulnerability one. Sometimes you'll get one that damages everything on the screen. Mostly you're going to get squire and health ones. Now here we're going to have a little bit of a moment where we're getting some new enemies coming in. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and let's fire off the bow because that's a pretty powerful weapon that can make short work of various mobs around you. Basically, this is your game. It's a shmup. You're going to be going left and right, up and down. And I should probably be trying harder to dodge here and I'm just not. But you're going to have various effects along the way. You're going to have to choose your weapons. You're going to have to be careful. And you're going to have to not break your controller. Because honestly, 
it is a difficult game and it can be a little frustrating. So just kind of have that in mind. But there you go. That's Griffin Knight Epic. It's brand new today on Steam. If you like shmups, I really do suggest you check it out. I really did rather enjoy my time playing it before it became available. And I'm going to continue enjoying it now that it actually is available. And this is one of those things that's kind of talking about finding secret areas. This is a secret area. Now, I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler right now. There's no rune in here because I've done this before. But I did get a good chunk of change. And uh, gold does buy you upgrades. So there you go. That's Griffin Knight Epic. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a little more about it. I do like to hear back from you. And otherwise, if you're interested, I do have some other videos on the channel. Check those out or, you know, not whatever. It's up to you. It's all good. I'm not going to push anything on you. But I do hope you enjoyed this one and I will catch you on the next video. So until then, thanks for watching. See you later.